we'll be talking about be mindful or the mind will make you a fool so we'll talk about mindfulness from the yoga perspective and how we can apply it in our lives i'll be talking about four simple principles by which we all can become more mindful in whatever we do so our world today we may say why why do we need to be mindful at all so our world is characterized by an alarming imbalance and this was talked up mentioned even few more 50 years ago by martin luther king junior the pioneer of the civil rights movement in america and he said that our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power we have guided missiles and misguided men so we have enormous power to control the outer world right now just by pressing a few buttons we all may be in different parts of the country different parts of the world we are connected so this is extraordinary level of outer power we have but misguided men he's he spoke this quote before we had gender neutral language so it's misguided human beings in general that he was speaking about but there is something inside us that misguides us something that makes us do things that hurt others and hurt ourselves so probably the most tragic example of this kind of misguided people is self destruction self destruction can be in the form of suicide suicide is literally the mind attacking and killing the body and over a million people commit suicide every year that means since i started this talk already two people have committed suicide about that's one suicide every 40 seconds so it's more than that actually it's almost five six people have committed suicide so now what and what he talked about was actually you can say the internet is not there at that time in today's world this misdirection of the mind is even more alarming because it's not just the imbalance that we have a lot of control over the outer world and little control over the inner world rather there is a systematic propaganda to get our inner world to get our mind out of our control now we in today's world are subjected to these three factors there is ever increasing competition among ever expanding distractions for ever decreasing attention spans so in the past if somebody wanted entertainment okay they would go watch tv at home maybe tv in india 20 25 years 30 years ago there was one channel doordarshan to go and watch a movie to go to a theater so now there is ever increasing competition among ever expanding distractions so we have not just movies we have the internet with so many websites and not only so many websites and so many apps and so many forums but they are all competing with each other every new app that comes up there is first facebook there is twitter there is there are so many new apps which keep coming up there is instagram there is <clears throat> there are so many new apps which keep coming up and they all seek and they want to capture our attention and what is happening is not only are there more factors pulling us from outside but our own attention spans are decreasing so the atten- ever decreasing attention spans and thus our mind gets pulled in hundreds of directions sometimes our mind is like a, if we have a computer browser and some people have like 35 tabs open and one tab is frozen and from that tab some big noise is coming maybe some alarm noise some 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 unwanted uh, beeping some music whatever and we don't even know from which tab it is coming so we want to stop it we can't even stop like that so sometimes we just find ourselves in a bad mood and we don't even know why i'm in a bad mood like this what exactly happened so some part of us is annoyed some part of us is angry but what is it angry what's going on so getting a sense of our inner world is vital and that is actually the whole process of yoga if we consider the process of yoga it goes from outward to inward 
from yam niyam asan pranayam it goes inward inward as we learn to calm our mind so there is practically no activity which can provide us greater returns than the activity of learning to manage our mind learning to focus our mind and there is no activity that can cause greater danger if not done than failing to manage our mind so we all worry if we invest our money somewhere whether we'll get good returns or not we think a lot about it but what about investing some time some thought some energy in managing our most important resource so managing the mind is vital for us so i said i'll talk about four simple steps for managing the mind and these are education experimentation evaluation and elevation so what is what do we mean by education over here nowadays education is big business millions and billions of dollars are spent to try, uh, by people to try to get the best education when we want to talk about education in the context of mindful living it's somewhat different it's what does that education mean we are referring to how do we how are we perceived internally how do we perceive what is inside us so if we consider our inner world it's like a mine it's a mine and there's a lot of stuffs over there mine is a place where we have to dig and we have to dig and a lot of dirt has to be removed before we can get to the gold or whatever precious item is there so one of the key insights that we all need to get sooner or later in our dealing with the mind is this everything inside me is not me generally whenever thought or idea comes up from inside let's eat this let's watch this let's touch this let's go there let's buy this uh, nowadays with online shopping available it's so easy to buy whatever we want so but when these desires come up what happens afterward if somebody asks some people buy 100 things and then they ask why did you buy this some somebody else asks them why did you buy this thing uh, they themselves don't know why they bought it it's just something inside them spoke spoke to them and they did it so the key thing the bhagavad gita and the yoga text tell us is that there are factors inside us which are actually not us which are different from us so inside us there are many thoughts emotions memories desires aspirations but they don't exist in harmony you can't have a label okay this is a this is a good thought this is a bad thought this is this it just stays sometimes if we go to a nine go to a, a classroom where there is no teacher and all the students are talking and we can't discern anyone's voice and maybe if some student talks much louder than others then maybe we can hear their voice but just because some student is talking loudest doesn't mean that that student is the wisest what that student is speaking is the best thing to do or even that that student represents the whole class so inside us there are various voices going on so it's important for us to get a sense of what is happening inside without that it's it's like whichever voice speaks the loudest we listen to it and then we neglect sometimes values that are important for us we do things that we end up regretting so that is the need for mindfulness so the yoga texts offer us a model of the self and what is that model it's a three level model that is say that our body is like the hardware if we consider a computer system the mind is like the software and the soul is the user so this is the yogic model of the self now what what do we mean by this that there are, there is a three level existence physical mental and spiritual and among these three levels the mind is in between let's try to understand it from another way here if you see it the body is like the hardware the uh, the body is what exists outside physically the mind is the software and sometimes the mind is also referred to as the lower self the lower self is the part of us which sometimes act against us and then there is the soul there is a higher self that is like the user now this idea that there are there are different voices 
there are two voices the lower self and the higher self this is universal if any of you know about star wars in star wars there's the constant theme there's a the dark side and there's the bright side or the light side and sometimes the biggest hero of well, the, the the person who was supposed to be the biggest hero that person may go on to the dark side when they go somebody goes to the dark side what does it mean that means their lower self takes control so there is the higher self there is a part of us which is which is kind which is noble which is service oriented and there is a part of us which is impulsive which is rude uh, which is exploitative and that now which voice is coming up we don't know that that's why sometimes you if we know the story of something like dr jekyll and mr hyde sometimes it's like both the good person dr jekyll and the mr hyde both of them are inside us that's why what happens is sometimes we are wise and sometimes we are otherwise otherwise just the opposite of wise sometimes especially when we are giving advice to others we may speak things which uh, even we are surprised what kind of wisdom is coming from me but sometimes when we have to act we do such things that we feel what kind of person am i how was how to act so stupidly so it depends on who is surfacing is it the mind that is speaking and the mind is taking control so it's like again go making the software metaphor sometimes there are some programs which are default programs and we are working on our computer but suddenly some default program starts and it just takes over the computer it's like a virus and we are just watching and maybe that that program is it starts a movie or it starts some some file it deletes some things it does various things and although we are there watching the computer but the computer control is not there with us just now a few days ago my phone got damaged and it, normally if the phone gets damaged it just stops working but this damage was quite graphic it was suddenly it seemed the touch screen was getting activated and suddenly some file was getting attached and somebody was being sent a message now i was just observing it i was observing that suddenly whatsapp was opening and the message was going over here and suddenly skype was opening and then some file was getting attached hey, is this a virus or what is it and i couldn't even even if i press the power button i just couldn't do anything i couldn't close it i couldn't stop it i couldn't do anything and nowadays with modern phones you cannot even take the battery out so i just desperately because all kinds of messages were going to everyone i just had to force the power button repeatedly and finally it switched off so that was basically a malfunction so it may be my device but if there is a glitch in the software if there's a glitch in the functioning so if a virus comes up if something gets corrupted it's my software it is no longer it's like so sometimes in our lives it happens that we become observers and we become not just passive but sometimes horrified observers what am i doing sometimes we know i shouldn't get i shouldn't yell i shouldn't speak things like this but we end up speaking so what is happening is this mind which is like the software it is going out of control it is going out of control so to first of all understand that everything inside me is not me that is the beginning of mindfulness so i said we'll talk about four things so the first is that education so once we have the education now let's do a simple thought experimentation so, so there are many different people who have different models of what the mind is but is there any way to actually understand it how do we know this is for real that is there something called a mind and beyond that is there something called a soul so we could go into scientific analysis of the nature of consciousness and where it exists and how it comes from that's a different subject we are focusing more on applicational aspect today so let's look, look at a simple thought experiment so i request all of you to wherever you are you sit comfortably and uh, take three deep breaths close your eyes and take 3 deep breaths 1 2 now with your eyes closed look ahead 
look ahead because your eyes are closed you cannot see whatever is in front of you but that doesn't mean that you see nothing there is some kind of screen inside you and on that screen you may see various things you may see your phone or laptop where you have been watching this program you may see your room you may see a loud one you may see some favorite object of yours you may see various images coming and going or you may see just a dull haze of colors over there whatever it is that you see you see it on a screen inside you now while you are observing that screen try to take a step back and catch sight of who it is that is observing that screen who it is that is observing that screen i repeat take a step back there is a screen inside and somebody is ob observing that screen so try to take a step back and catch sight of whoever is observing that screen no matter how many times you step back the seer steps back with you what you are looking for is what you are looking with what you are looking for is what you are looking with so no matter how many steps you take back you can't actually see the seer so that seer is you the soul and the screen on which you are seeing various things that is your mind take one deep breath and then you can open your eyes thank you so here i'll repeat this once again this the out the outer scene which is the physical reality that's outside the inner screen is the mind and the seer is the soul so normally when perception happens the outer scene the inner screen and the seer all three come in one line so the mind is focused on the outer world and when that happens that is when we perceive things so we don't perceive things directly we perceive the image of those things on our mind and when we are asleep when we are dreaming there is no outer physical reality but on the mind on the inner screen some images may be coming and going that's how we see dreams so basically our functioning happens that for us the mind is an important link between us and the physical reality and if the mind is elsewhere that means if a person is absent minded what does that mean the mind is always there but it's somewhere else the mind is gone somewhere else mm -hmm. so sometimes we're talking with someone and we can see their eyes glazing when the eyes start glazing it indicates that maybe earth to you earth to you which planet did you go to just now come back come back so we say like that why because if the mind goes somewhere else that the person may be there the body might be there but there is no perception that happens now why is this important to understand this thought experiment this three levels of being if you understand then we can better make sense of what goes on inside us and how we can gain control of it the bhagavad gita and the yoga texts repeat like patanjali yoga sutra they repeatedly talk about the point that we have to calm our mind we have to regulate the directions of our mind yoga chitta vritti nirodha as the yoga sutra says that at the chitta vritti the movements of the mind we want to calm down we need to regulate it so the gita also talks says that this mind this inner screen you know, it can it can be our friend or it can be a so this was an experiment to gain sense of the fact that there is 
there is something inside us different from us. So inside us is a screen that's different from us. So now we come to the third step that is evaluation. So what do we mean by evaluation over here? That we, okay, we got an understanding that there are, there are the multiple layers of our being and we got an experiential sense of that. Now, after getting that experiential sense, how do we bring it to function in our life? So that's where we need to evaluate when thoughts come in. So now the inner screen plays a dual role. It is sometimes a window and sometimes a movie screen. I was uh, a few years ago in California and I was uh, visiting a friend and this friend had a house with a big window and uh, out, through that window you could uh, see the beautiful uh, hills and the forest and the skyline of California. So we were, we were looking at it at the scenery and we were chatting with each other and then suddenly as I was watching through the window I saw a giant ape appear in the distance on that hill and that, that ape literally, it was uh, like the kind you would say in the planet of the apes, no, huge. And suddenly it, it seemed to be flying from the hill, it just came charging, charging, charging. It came right near the window and it raised its fists to slam the glass window and come inside. As I was observing it, first I was surprised, then I became concerned and then I became alarmed. It was so close, was it going to come and attack us? And then look at my friend and he was grinning. He was having some fun at my expense. I said, I looked at him again and I saw there was some kind of a remote in his hand. And I looked at him and then he clicked the remote. And as soon as he clicked the remote, the ape disappeared. What happened? So he told me that actually that window, he had designed it in such a way that that window could double as a TV screen. And just to have fun with his visitors, he had actually made an animated uh, video clip wherein whatever was the backdrop that you saw through the window with that same backdrop, he had put that ape. So initially when we were chatting, that window was actually functioning like a window. It basically glass, it was functioning like the window. But while we were chatting, you just click a button and the window changed to a movie screen. And when it changed to a movie screen, I, I didn't know that at all. And suddenly I saw that ape and I thought it was real. So I got alarmed. So when he told me this, we had a good laugh. But after what I was thinking, this is very much the way our mind works. During our daily functioning, we need our mind to be like a window. And that's how it normally functions. Say we are driving along, driving, say we are driving a car through crowded traffic. The mind is like a window. I think, okay, this person is coming from here. This person is over here. Maybe I can squeeze in and go ahead from here. No, the space is too less. I cannot go from here. So we are functioning. But sometimes, while the mind is functioning like a window, showing us things of the outer world, suddenly, sometimes it just becomes a movie screen. And when it becomes a movie screen, it starts showing us something from the past, something from the future. Oh, this person did like this, that person did like that, and that, that happened, and that person. And they say we are driving, we are caught in the traffic, and we are sitting and waiting. Suddenly, we remember you know, that person insulted me on that day. And suddenly our mind starts getting filled with revenge fantasies. You know, next time I went this, next time I do this, we meet, this is what I'm going to speak. And if they speak this, I'll speak this. And a whole revenge fantasies movie is going on. And suddenly we may find that, you know, we're breathing heavily, we are sweating, our whole muscles are contracted and we are in a bad mood. And suddenly the person next to what happened? Are you okay? Are we okay? Well, physically we are okay. But what has happened is, the mind started showing us a movie. And if we don't know, like my friend, he knew that that window had become a movie screen. And that's why he was not disturbed. That he was laughing at me. But I didn't know and I was disturbed. So for all of us, it is important 
that we be able to discern is the mind functioning a window showing me objective facts about the world or is the mind functioning like a movie screen showing me either something uh, completely disconnected from the world or the mind may take one small thing from the world and just blow up things just create a movie from there so if we see someone we don't like then what happens is as soon as we see them immediately what they did and why we didn't like them and what all has happened in the past that movie starts playing inside us and then just their sight may anger them may anger us so this mind we have to be able to evaluate is this functioning like a window or is it functioning like a movie screen and that is critical to mindfulness so another example to illustrate this so this is the user this is the hardware this is the body there's the soul the software is the mind and this is the body so what happens is from the body the physical part of us there is a image that comes on the mind and the person might be a, so sometimes the movie can be about someone else sometimes the movie can be about ourselves also we might get a distorted picture of ourselves so we may think oh i am too short i am too tall i am too thin i am too fat i am too dark i am too fair whatever and then that is also we may think oh, what will people think about me what will this what will this happen what will what will that happen so uh, what to speak of our conception of the world our own conception about ourselves may get distorted by the mind so now that's why mindfulness is about becoming aware okay this is what the mind is showing so here you will see in one sense through thoughts we can actually yeah through thoughts we can project ourselves okay i am different from the mind i am observing it i remember about maybe 30 35 years ago uh, 30 years ago roughly before even i was introduced to spiritual life i was in college and um, i was doing an experiment in my engineering laboratory and suddenly a friend told me hey there's wildlife on your body and the first word that came out of my mouth were hey don't don't hurt it i looked around and there was some small kind of insect on my shirt so i gently put my finger there and i got it on my finger got it on my finger and i went to the corner and put it in the window sill and he looked at me and okay he maybe appreciated my soft heartedness or whatever but just two days later he had done something and i was so angry with him and i just we were at some distance and i got so angry and i said i will kill you obviously it was figurative but i just said that and raised my fist and charged toward him and as i charged toward him his mouth fell open and he looked at me with wide eyes and when i looked at the, and he looked at me with my wide eyes with his wide eyes suddenly i remembered the incident two days ago and it was like i felt i am observing myself from above here i am saying it from below but here the image is from below so i was observing myself from above he what's this the other day you were not ready to hurt even an ant and now what are you doing you are about to hit your own friend who is this person who is this stranger this is not you and just as the thought came immediately my hand just fell by my side and i i just stopped and that was the time i started wondering what is going on inside us so what happens is for us if we can perceive okay this is the mind speaking at that time i didn't have that clear understanding this is the mind i understood something within me is wrong but there are times when we act completely out of character and if we become a little more mindful we will catch ourselves acting out of character before we do that action so that's evaluation hey this is the screen showing so this is what the screen is showing but the person is like this so now how do we evaluate for that there is an important concept to understand now we use the word thought in two senses so i just got a thought when we use the word thought in that sense what do you mean it's something some idea popped up in my mind so that thought refers to a mental pop up it comes within us and then 
somebody might say i have given this a lot of thought so that means i have given this attention i have given this careful contemplation i thought about it carefully so we use the word thought in two different senses so why is this relevant so if we consider going back to the earlier metaphor there is inner seer and there is inner screen so not every thought deserves our thought not every thing that pops up in our mind it needs to be paid attention to that is mindfulness that is evaluation evaluation is okay say if i am working on my computer and suddenly i get a notification a notification pops up your friend has updated their whatsapp profile or they updated their facebook a new photo on facebook now if i am doing some important work at that time okay that pop up has come i just neglected that pop up goes down and it disappears so just because something has popped up that doesn't mean it deserves my attention so evaluation means we understand okay when a thought has come up it's not necessarily my thought it is just a pop up on the screen of the mind and when the pop up has come up so i i talked earlier how the mind is like a window and it can become like a movie so how does the window change to a movie it changes through a pop up a pop up comes up and if we are not very conscious when the pop up comes up we pay attention we click it the pop up takes over the screen and then the movie starts now all this happens inside our mind so that's why we don't realize it i was in a i was giving a talk on science and spirituality in a university in america and after that they took me to their ai robotics lab lab to show and they had some technology it was it was fascinating as well as alarming so what was the technology it's it's coming up in the mainstream also now that actually when say if we are watching a youtube video now when we finish we are even while we are watching a youtube video there are others if it's not full screen there are other videos like nearby and then we see them should i want would i want to watch this do i want to watch this do i want to watch this then we click a physical link we click the link and if we click it then that video opens up but what this technology is doing is that so if we are watching something on a screen the, normally we think of the screen as simply a passive object where something is being displayed and uh, we are watching it but the screen is not just that the screen is much more so so the through the camera they will have software by which they will see which area of the screen our eyes are focused on so if i am watching a youtube video and my eyes stay for say more than 3 seconds or 5 seconds or 10 seconds on the next view the timing can be set then that video will open up automatically and not just a video a link also okay i think please don't make notation notations over here on the screen mm-hmm. yeah so what happens is that when it pops so if it takes catches our attention even if we say it's some link we are reading one article and there's some other related articles over there if we just pay attention for 10 seconds that link will automatically open up so they are saying we want to make life easy for the for the reader they don't even have to physically press a finger to click links just look at something for 10 seconds it will pop up i was thinking how entangling this would be we just look and it just pops up but then i was thinking that's how it happens in our mind in our mind there are no physical links so right now you are hearing this class while you are hearing this class suddenly a thought might come up in you hey okay did i lock the door of my house properly they turn off the gas now something some pops might be important we have to pay attention to it but sometimes something completely irrelevant we are just hearing something and suddenly you know from nowhere 10 years ago somebody might have spoken some harsh words to us and that pops up how dare this person speak like this is that relevant is it important is 10 years ago so when the pop up comes up if we pay attention to it it gains power it grows so that's why not every thought are not it's a mental pop up deserves our thought that is our attention so many thoughts will come in and eva- evaluation means decide which thoughts to pay attention to and the bhagavata krishna says that be aware 
of the mind that there are many thoughts will come in lobha pravritra arambha krishna says many many thoughts will keep coming in but don't get caught in them so it's another metaphor to understand this point of evaluation so in the bhagavad gita the word is used udasinavat udasinavat is as if detached so now that udasinavat can be translated in english in different ways detached doesn't really convey much it just thinks that do i have to renounce the world what does detachment mean so there are two words disinterested and uninterested what is the difference see disinterested is to have no vested interests to be impartial to be objective uninterested is to not care at all to not care at all so when thoughts come inside us we can't be completely uncaring you know the thoughts are inside us but if we don't get emotionally caught in those thoughts okay is this important right now let me evaluate it so we could have an example say of a cricket match now in a cricket match there is the umpire now should the umpire be disinterested or uninterested if say the bowler bowls and the ball goes and hits the legs and all the players appeal how's that it's lbw they are appealing for that and the cricket player says bat the umpire says i was not watching the match you not watching the match what are you here for then you supposed to watch the match but just because the players appeal loudly and the umpire says out every time the players appeal out appeal loudly out out hey that's not the umpire's job the umpire's job is not to respond to the volume of the appeal it is to respond to the merit of the appeal so the, the umpire has to actually look carefully so like that we need to become inner umpires inner umpires aprakasham cha pravrittim cha moham eva cha pandava na dveshti sampravrittani na nivrittani kaankshati udasinav dasinam gunairyo na vichalyate krishna says udasinavad all these thoughts will come in evaluate them based on merit krishna says so be disinterested not uninterested what is going on inside us we have to observe it but be disinterested so like umpire so when a thought comes in oh, let's make a phone call to this person okay i'm studying right now do i need to do this right now uh, not really yeah you can do you can do it later also nothing that urgent okay let's focus so focusing means when the pop up comes up we evaluate it based on merit that's how we'll be able to focus so now we may say isn't all this very complex how do we even realize what thoughts are coming and which thoughts are going where yeah it's it's complex but what we can start with is with especially disruptive thoughts so if we have planned for the next 1 hour say for for the next 40 minutes i'm going to attend say this talk and suddenly if a thought comes in and says okay let's do that well, do i need to do this right now so having a plan having a purpose makes us more aware when something disrupts the purpose so the the greater the structure in our my life the more quickly we notice the rupture that the mind is causing if if i don't have any plan of what to do then the mind will have a lot of plans of what i should do and we will be completely captivated we will not even realize when we are getting controlled by the mind so if we are aware okay this is what i want to do and suddenly i just don't i just don't feel like doing it i feel like doing something else what's happening that's when we can become aware that's how we can become aware so now we may say evaluation sometimes i know i shouldn't be doing this sometimes i want to read i want to exercise i want to meditate i want to do so many things but i just don't feel like doing it something inside me resists so the problem is not evaluation the problem is execution so when what do you do at that time for that is the last part so that is elevation elevation means we need to recognize that we actually exist so earlier i talked about these three things as outer screen inner outer scene inner screen and inner seer that is horizontal for the sake of perception however in existence it's vertical it's vertical means that i that our situations are at the physical level above them as a mind with the emotions therein and above them is the soul the essence of who we are and we exist at that spiritual level so 
theoretically we may get some idea that i am a so uh, maybe i am there is i am a spiritual being i am consciousness i am soul but we need practical experience we need realization of that and that comes through spiritual practices that comes through meditation that comes through prayer that comes through mantra chanting and that raises our consciousness upwards a few years ago i was in i was in america and one of my friends was on a writing retreat in florida no in texas so at that time a big storm had come and he was living in, alone in a small in one house which a, which a friend was it's his friend's house and his friend's house which was empty and he wanted to completely focus on writing so he was just staying in that house in one one room and another attached place where there was a bath there was the kitchen and other things other amenities so one morning he woke up and he looked through the window and it was he looked up and he saw there was no power there was no internet on the phone and he looked through the window and he saw all around there's water it's in the head it slept heavy heavily but it slept deeply and he noticed it been a heavy storm and all the roads around were covered with water and as he saw the heavy rains coming he looked through the window and he saw that the water was rising 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 and he soon realized that the water level was going to rise it was going to force itself through the windows and it's forcing itself to the through the doors and it's going to flood the room and he didn't know he, he, that place was a little isolated he had wanted such a place for it was like a cabin in a little remote part of the town where he was staying and he says he didn't know anyone the phone was not working nothing was working he said, what to do he couldn't even call 911 i started panicking said, what do i do where do i go and as he was looking around suddenly he noticed oh there was one door which he had not noticed he thought maybe this is a closet door or something like that he just come there a couple of days ago and he had been busy in writing so then he just tried to open the door and he saw there is a way to a this there's a small fle- narrow f- stairs over there and it led to the attic it, the attic was not very big but it was there so he quickly ran up the attic and he ran up and he waited there and so the water rose water rose the entire first level was flooded it was covered but because he was above he was safe he was safe and then he was there for several hours like that and then finally some rescue boats came and then he called out to them and he was saved so if he he is telling me that if he hadn't discovered that attic he would have probably drowned and died so for all of us sometimes a flood comes like that sometimes situations become overwhelming sometimes the emotions that arise from the situations become overwhelming so we all need to find that attic where we can rise above and that knowledge of the attic and the pathway to go up the stairway to go up that attic that is the essential purpose of spirituality spiritual knowledge gives us that there is a attic up there there is a higher level of reality and the practices they help us rise to that higher level of reality so above the mind's waves so if you consider the mind the waves are coming the yogi rises the yogi the, the yogi is who yoga is connection the soul connected with the whole that is the yoga that is the yogi so we all can rise up like this and when we rise up now there are different forms of yoga bhakti yoga is the form of yoga where the connection is not just with some point of concentration the co- connection is the person who reciprocates with us a person who loves us who cares for us who wants the best for us and if we seek to rise up it's not in this case he, this friend he himself climbed up to the attic so here if some rescue helicopter has come to pick somebody up from below then if they if they throw a rope and this person has to climb up the rope that's tough but if they throw a rope and they pull him up it's much easier so bhakti yoga talks about a divine that all attractive divine is known in the bhagavad gita as krishna the all attractive being so he's a living loving person who cares for us who wants the best for us who wants to elevate our consciousness so when we practice yoga the yoga of love the yoga of bhakti then we connect with the divine and this is one of the most easiest and most effective ways of raising our consciousness upward 
And when we raise our consciousness upward, then what happens? We can't control the situations that are going to come in our life. Life determines our problems, but it is we who determine their size. If we identify with our mind, we get carried away by the movie that is going on in the mind. I mean, small problem can seem catastrophic, but if you can say hey, this is this is just to pop up on the mind and this movie, I don't need to play this movie. If you understand that, then we can keep the problem in perspective. And when you keep the problem in perspective, then each one of us has enormous God-given potential. It is our mind which, when uncontrolled, it keeps sabotaging us. It it keeps working against us. If we could learn to manage our mind, then all our, then our potential would come out. We'll be able to harness it better. And the, who knows? See, when we are fighting again, when we are being sabotaged from within, even then, all of us are doing various things in our life. We are trying to meet our responsibilities. We are trying to reach our goals. But if we could pull ourselves together. If we could learn to manage our mind, if we would become more mindful, how much more good we could do? And discovering that, discovering how much good we can do, if we can stop our mind from bringing out our best, now that discovery can be our life's greatest adventure. The life's greatest adventure doesn't have to be bungee jumping. Doesn't have to have some adventure sports, go to some hill station. People think that will make my life adventurous. Yeah, that may. But the real adventure is not suddenly going away from the normal course of our life. The real adventure is the normal course of our life. How can I make it into an adventure? And that will happen when we learn to bring out our best. We all have this sense that I can do much better than what I am doing right now. I can be much better than what I am right now. Now, how much better can I do? How much better can I become? If we learn to manage our mind, there's a lot much better, lot more we can do. And how much more? Discovering that is the adventure that yoga invites us to. The Bhagavad Gita concludes with Arjuna raising his hand in, with the bow upraised, confident in his, in his power, in his purpose to fight. So yoga is also meant for that purpose for us. When we learn to manage our mind, then we also become confident. Whatever fights we have to face, what challenges we have to face, whatever battles we have to fight in life, we can face them all confidently. When we have learned to manage the opponent within us, when we have learned to manage our mind, that's what makes our life the greatest adventure. So I'll summarize. I spoke today about four main points that I started by why do we need to be mindful? Two reasons. One is we have a lot of outer power, but we our inner power has gone down. Guided missiles, misguided men. Not just that. Unfortunately, the outer power of technology is actually being used to manipulate our inner power or to exploit our lack of inner power. That our mind, it is being captivated, ever increasing competition among ever expanding distractions for ever decreasing attention spans. So there's nothing as important as learning to manage our inner world. So for that, we did this is four things. First of all, education. Everything inside me is not me. There are three levels of reality, the physical, mental, and spiritual. And the mind with its many ideas, thoughts, desires, all of them are not me speaking. Now, so what is this speaking might be good, might be bad, but that requires evaluation. Then we did the thought experiment to understand how this is not just a model, it's something which you can all intuit. So there is the inner screen, which is the mind, and we are the inner seers. We are the conscious beings, the soul. And then, what that was experimentation. Third was evaluation. So evaluation, <coughs> I talked about four points. One, first is that, that not every thought deserves our thought. When a pop-up comes up on the inner screen, we don't have to click that pop-up. And that the second metaphor was that, uh, that it's a movie screen. It's a window which can change to a movie screen at any time. So we need to be aware. If I click this pop-up, a movie may start. So I don't, I will not click this. So be observant. And the third point when that connection was that we need to, uh, it's like 
the cricket match be disinterested not uninterested so be like a umpire whenever a thought comes up any idea comes up we need to carefully observe evaluate that based on merit not that everything that the mind says is bad and has to, we have to say no to it but neither is everything right good and we have to say yes to it and to do be able to do this how do we discern it have structure in our life as much as possible then whenever something starts causing a rupture we'll notice it oh this is the mind causing and then last part was elevation so sometimes we know the mind is stopped, causing a disruption in my life but we are not able to stop it for that we need to raise above the mind the mind can bring stormy waves and we are powerless we'll get swept away if we are at the same level but if you can rise to a higher level just like my friend discovered the attic and he was saved from the waves so we we all can rise to a higher level of reality through meditation prayer mantra chanting we can situate ourselves in the spiritual level and yoga is actually meant to take us to the spiritual level and bhakti yoga accelerates this process by telling us that what we meditate on is not just a point that we concentrate and then we try to rise up to that rather it's a person who reciprocates who can lift us up and once we have risen to this higher level then our problems may still be there we can't control the problems coming in our life but we determine the size of those problems we don't let those pop ups grow up too much and then lastly if we could manage our mind we could prevent our mind from obstructing and sabotaging us then how much good we can do discovering that can be our life's greatest adventure thank you very much hare krishna